Hey, I'd like to introduce you to yourself. This is the Seeking Selfdom Going Deeper podcast, and I'm your host, Akello Stone. Hey, welcome to episode 13 of Seeking Selfdom Going Deeper. This is the last episode of this limited series. As you know that this podcast was to go deeper into the ideas, the thoughts, the insights that were shared in the book Seeking Selfdom in the Age of Selfies. This podcast would not have been possible without the tremendous work and effort of Cole Murray, who went through the book, as I said in the first episode, and really pulled out some incredibly profound, insightful questions um, to give me something to, you know, to respond to, because if it was left to me, I could probably talk for hours about the ideas and, you know, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that, right? So I have to commend, uh, Cole, thank you so much. This would not be possible without you. And with that in mind, let's get to the first of three questions in our final episode. You mentioned there's a disconnect between knowledge creators, scholars and scientists, what the media reports and what the masses believe. How can we decipher the noise from the truth? So I'm a person who has one foot in academia and one foot in digital content creation of various forms. And I know firsthand, and I'm talking, this is like 20 years of balancing these two. And there's, there's knowledge that is created, which uh, hopefully if you go to college and you take classes, that's what you're after. And you're not just after the credits and the degree, although many really are. But um, what about the knowledge that helps us understand the world, helps us understand ourselves, our place in the world, and, and, you know, just getting us closer to the truth. I discern between truth with a lowercase t and a capital T. The capital T truth is that that actually is, and the lowercase truth is that which we have been given, that's what we have taken, and it does not represent the totality of the truth, the truth of existence, the truth of everything. You know, we'll never get there, but we should still strive to do that. And when I first went to college, I really became passionately wanting to find the actual truth with a capital T. I don't know. Well, I know that I'll never really find it, but I, I, it's, a, it's a lifelong process. But what I have found is that academia, journal articles, you know, the actual knowledge construction where we have academicians that are actually doing research and publishing papers that are peer reviewed in those papers and I and articles find their way in to textbooks, you know, textbooks. If you look at the reference section of textbooks, you know, like, even though there's one author or two of the textbook, there are hundreds of authors who have contributed to that scholarly body of work. So even if you're in college, you may just take that class take those tests and move on and not really retain that level of knowledge, but at least you have some. And then there are some people who, it's almost like junk food, right? Like some, some information in media is like junk food and some is like, you know, you spent your whole paycheck at Whole Foods, but really good healthy food. It's hard to discern between what is true and what is not true. We have to continually question everything and we have to find conduits of sources that we trust and why do we trust them because people that people that we trust trust those things that's one thing but what sometimes i think people want to find information that aligns with their own belief system even if it's not the truth so there's plenty of that out there right so it's not about me getting information it could be about me as a person finding information to help validate and support what I already believe, even though I don't really know why I believe it. You've got to know whatever you believe in and whatever your values are, I think you are required to know why you believe that way. And when you become an adult, you can no longer say, well, that's what I was raised to believe because what you were raised to believe is contextual and it may not have any relevance to the evolution that you've experienced as a person. 
So that's where really, really gets complicated. But I believe that we have to find, me as an academician, want to find ways to take like these bigger ideas and make them digestible and accessible to people who wouldn't be getting that information from that particular, you know, conduit of, of scholarly research. But there's also, you know, problems within that. I'm not saying scholars are, you know, um, getting everything right and have all have uh, good intentions and are not intrinsically integrating their own values in what they purport to be the truth for everybody see so then that gets biased so it's a really complicated thing but the more you learn the more you read and more information you digest like one valid source i'll be honest which is i think a really good bridge between higher level kind of research and intellectual inquiry and something that is you know palatable to the masses is ted talks i love ted talks i remember when they started and they're of high quality and there's a lot that goes into them so find keep looking for a source that you feel is really giving you some as much unbiased information as possible you wrote, personal development as a lifestyle is for a lifetime. What's the next chapter in your journey? Wow, wow, what's the next chapter in my journey? It's funny that we look at our, our, our life as a book and have different chapters and like each day it's like a page unfolding, um, you know, and you put the chapters together and there's your whole life and you could have volumes and volumes what's next for me you know i'm still trying to find that integration i call it like i call it like i'm a left brain and a right brain person as some people are predominantly on the left brain maybe they're more in the creative and other people on the right brain um, or is it the, is the other way around i have to think about that uh it's like left knee right knee right lr i remember little kids in kindergarten had like an l and r because they couldn't get that right um but yeah, okay, so yeah, I always, I have to lift my hands up. So yeah, the right brain person, they say, is more predominantly in the creative and the left brain is more in kind of the quantitative logical. And a lot of times people, you know, it could be 80-20, they could be 90-10, they could be 60-40. I feel like I'm balanced in the middle, kind of a 50-50 blend. And so you have these two things. How do you find these two ways of thinking and kind of being converge it's like form and content you know how do you what is the magic formula get, getting those to converge so for me getting this um podcast done which has been on the back of my mind for a, almost a year is a huge step towards what i want to do uh, again there's so many voices out there i always feel like Am I doing this, you know, for me? Am I doing this to be able to really think about my own thoughts? Which is what I do. You know, I read a, when you write a book, you read the book, you talk about the book, and things change and things evolve. And if I was to like rewrite the book, there'd probably be twice as, as long now. So there's that. There's um, the other thing that I've done. I've done, you know, some meditation workshops with youth and I've, I've, obviously done lots of meditations and retreats and, and those kind of things. But I want, I want to uh, do a meditation series, again, based on the ideas in the book, 13 med guided meditations called Delve into Seldom. Um, Delf, Del I'm sorry, I'm tripping out today, okay? Delve into Seldom, which is a way that you could use meditation in this self-development, self-work process. So that's on the drawing board. But again, these are still, that's still kind of products, right? That is still kind of these products. So I guess in terms of the next the chapter of my journey right now, um, you know, being in 50 years old and looking at my life in decades is really focusing on my health, look, focusing more on my spiritual development and my physical development. So there's a still a, a lot of work to be done in this particular decade for me and then there's also you know continually pursuing my passion for on-camera hosting and again that's one of the things i mentioned 
you know, if it happens, it does. If it doesn't, you know, along the way, I have little kind of benchmark projects and experiences that are moving me in that direction. So I still want to do that. That passion and that fire is still there. But I want it to be done authentically on my terms. I don't want to become someone else in that process. So retaining who I am and continually to refine. I like to use the word refine. A lot of times people say they want to reinvent themselves. You know, I think that you can never reinvent yourself. You've been in this mind and body for so long. Just refine. Make refinements, you know. Make ref changes over time. And... It's like smoothing out the rough edges and things, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's just smoothing out the rough edges. Like, like, uh, there's another way to put that. If you had to choose one, what's the most important message you hope your readers get from this book? I think that one of the, one of kind of the larger general messages in writing this book is we all have a book. We can all share something about ourselves we can all delve into a very long stressful process and come out at the end a changed person you know so i wanted to demonstrate to people that you know if that's what you want to do if you want to write a book you can pot you can totally do that if there's something else that you want to do you can totally do that i just want to demonstrate what is possible what we if we focus our efforts and put effort into things and chase things that we are passionate about and be able to assess the resources that we have and, you know, be able to think about how much time we can spend on some something and what's the length of time to get to the end result. And what is the motivation for doing the things that we do? What do we ultimately want? And when it all really comes down to it, um, I think what we all really want is to feel that our life is valuable, I feel that we are here for a purpose, to feel that we can continually evolve and grow as people, but also that we can continue to have richer, deeper connections with people and probably a smaller number of people, quality over quantity. It doesn't mean that you can't know hundreds of people you can to some degree, but how deep can you really know them? But then the other message that I, I think is important is we are, I'll use the word distracted to some degree. Um, can't think of another word, but we are continually distracted and bombarded with content and information and things that are pouring in and pouring in and pouring in so much so that we do not have the time or have not created or carved out the time to be able to take that inquiry inward and really look at ourselves and get deeper into ourselves, our mind, our body, our spirit, everything that encompasses ourselves. Well, finally, too, I could just see, I get, this is a great question. I could go on for a long time, but I think the, finally the question is, uh, or the answer that I would have to that question about about my message um, is is this I got to think I've got to think for one second it just came to me and it lo I lost it I I think I want people to know that they have much more power much more potential and much more like reason for being than they would ever possibly know. And it does not need to, nor should it be, validated by someone else. It's, it's you know, uh, again, during this time, during this pandemic, for those of us that are really, you know, very much restrict our movements because for fear of getting sick, right? But also because we don't want our individual behavior to impact a larger audience of people, right? So being at home so much, being having so much alone time, and yeah, people are on the phone or on video calls, right? Even though that's kind of like being with someone for a moment, it's really not. But even though that is happening, we are with ourselves 24 hours a day seven days a week, as long as we are breathing. So get to, to take this time, take this as an opportunity to dig deeper into yourself. 
And this doesn't mean you go through old photos and things like that. I'm saying you don't need anything. You can just sit there and think. And if the ideas that come to you pour out and you write them down or you journal them or you turn it into a song or a rap or you make a film or you create a, a new dish, you know, these are the manifestations of you looking deeper within yourself and taking that new knowledge and that new kind of appreciation and then exploring the world and experiencing the world, you know, from your in your own life, from your own kind of your own private little universe, if you will, you can be great company for yourself. We, you know, we all get lonely. Some people wish they had some alone time and then other people wish there was other people around. And ultimately, if you get to know yourself, become your best friend, argue with yourself, plead with yourself, reward yourself, you will ultimately be a better friend, a better spouse, a better family member for other people. And you can share that kind of evolution with other people and, and, and try to help them find some satisfaction with who they are. I think that would be the ultimate goal is that someone gets to know themselves a little bit more. And it, it'll take our whole lifetime to get there. But those little moments along the way are oh so rewarding. Now, thank you so much. I, I'm not sure if you listen to all the podcasts, but this is the last one. Believe it or not, it's done. Now I'm going to jump into the editing and, um, and try to get these podcasts out so that I can share these ideas with the world, which is what I encourage you to do. Take care. Thanks so much for listening. Have a wonderful day. Peace.